Welcome to Motor Power Monday. I'm Mike Ostertag. In this episode, we're going to cut out and then re start to replace the door panels on our SW7 project. I'm going to show you on these drawings from trainiacs.com exactly what needs to be changed. Here we're going to take these th door area right here on the SW1200. We're going to switch it out and make it look like this on the SW7. As you can see, it's not that difficult. I probably could have just done this a little easier, but hey, why do that? Okay, take the shell on a piece of sheet styrene. This is just some ten thousandths that I've got laying around. And I'll use this for a different project somewhere down the road. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm just going to draw or trace, excuse me, trace the outline of the shell on this piece of sheet styrene. And you'll see why I do this a little later in the video. But what it basically is going to be used for is so I can get the marking locations of where the doors are going to be and uh, the angle that I'm going to need to make that at or where I'm going to need to make the cut to make the angle for the new door panels. And as you can see here, I'm just uh, taking the uh, taking my pencil and marking the ends of the door where I'm going to be making my cuts. So that way I have a kind of just a reference point. Okay, now that that's all done, you can see I've got the uh, shape of the shell there and the angle as well as where the door ends are. Okay, now we're going to start getting the cut in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto blade and I'm just going to kind of trace almost along the edge of the doors where I'm going to make my cuts. And I know it's, go, it's I do this because you have to cut through those hinges. So it's easier to do that with a knife than it is to do it with the actual saw and try to make a, you know, a, a little bit of a bad cut. Um, now I just do this all the way along the entire area that I'm going to cut out and basically make kind of scribe lines. I'm going to come back over through that and to help guide these scribe lines will help to guide the uh, the razor saw when I go to cut the entire panel out here in a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to grab my handy little razor saw here and we're going to start cutting. You can pick these up at uh, Micromark. Dot com. Here's the uh, website right there. You can also get them at uh, umm-usa.com. There's the uh, website right there. And if you really, if, as you can see, they make a real fine kerf. Mine's kind of messed up, so I actually have to kind of adjust mine from time to time. I should really go and buy a brand new one. But as you can see, it, it cuts real nice, makes a real nice thin uh, it doesn't take out a lot of plastic, so it makes a real thin cut. And I'm just going to finish up these last couple of saw cuts. This blade does a really great job cutting through plastic. And as you can see, there you have the how thin that kerf is. And now we're going to start working on the the uh, long cut. Well, I'm going to. One of the problems is is that the uh, battery box area where the cab sits actually is higher. You can see right there where there's a little drop there. So I use those. Uh, little pieces of uh, clothespin to help balance everything and make a little bit more level surface. As you can see, I, I do have a little bit of a trouble with it. it. I had to make a couple adjustments and things like that. And It's not an exact science. Um, I'm sure there's a much better way of doing it. But long story being short, eventually I got all the way through that entire cut and just kind of snapped it right off, and there we have our door panel off. I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and kind of clean up the corners here. Try to square them up as much as I can. Get a little extra pieces of plastic off of there. Just kind of make it look kind of pretty. I'll do the same thing to the other side of the shell, and now I'm going to start moving on to taking off these exhaust stacks. really cool thing about this saw is that you can adjust the blade in different positions in order to accommodate what you need to have done. You just have to be really careful with it. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm removing these exhaust stacks now, it's because I have the or the razor saw out and it's kind of convenient. Um, eventually, these are going to get replaced with uh, Milwaukee Road style spark arresters. Okay, let's build some new sides. Okay, here I've got a couple of pieces of 0.100 by 0.625 evergreen styrene, and uh, put up against my machinist squaring block. And I'm just going to weld this together using some plasti weld by Flexifile. You can find any plastic weld is, is good to use. Anything, you just use what you prefer. Find that stuff at most hobby shops. Not that expensive. 
Okay, now that I've got my pieces uh, welded together, I'm going to mark off where I want that angle is going to be. And this is where that drawing that we made earlier comes in handy. I'm just going to take a machinist square, draw a real quick line right there, as you can see with my pencil. Okay, now that we have the uh, line where the angle is going to be, I'm going to take my uh, razor. Uh, this isn't going to work very well. I think I'll just grab my X-Acto knife and make a little groove in there. Okay, now we're going to go and take our file and clean it off using a wire brush. It's a cheap old wire brush, but it's all the nice. If you do that, you can make your files nice and nice and clean. It gives you a good cutting edge. Now what we're going to do is it's a triangle file, and we're going to put it so that the one flat surface is up and that one point is down. We're just going to go on that groove. We're going to start filing away and open that groove up. We don't want to go all the way through it. We want to go maybe about three quarters of the way, just till it's a little flexible. Uh, you don't want to make it, you want to be able to make it so it's pliable and usable and workable because you got to bend that. You don't want to put so much force on it that you snap that off because then you're going to end up having to start all over and you really don't want to do that. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> I know. Okay, well I got to get this done. I'm going to take this out of screen for a second and just make sure I got this the way I want to. And we'll show you a little better. This is not the best little video right there, but it does fit. As you can see, this fits in the opening really nice. It's not it's not ready for permanent installation yet. The key is to make sure your corners are squared up, and that's kind of what I'm checking right now. As you can see, i got to cut a bunch off the bottom, so I'm just going to kind of hand put that in there and hold it in place while I take my pencil and just make a mark where I need to make a cut. And here I've got the chunk of the styrene that I need to take off uh, marked out. I was going to take a little razor saw, a big razor saw actually, not a little one. And I was going to start going real easy. I'm going to use a straight edge to get this thing started. I tried doing it freehand and that didn't work very well. And here you can see I'm using a straight edge just to get that groove started for the cut. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to start cutting away at this thing. This takes quite a while, so I'm cutting quite a bit of this video out. <laughs> we'll go. Let's just skip right to the end. <laughs> uh, it took a long time to get to the, through this, so I didn't want to bore you with uh, watching me cut a piece of plastic for 15 minutes. As you can see, I finally made it all the way through, and uh, eventually I'll get it back in. There we go, and there, boom! Now it's all cut off and everything. I'm going to go and take and start tack gluing this into place using some plastic weld. Um, it doesn't take right away. It's kind of awkward to hold on to this stuff as I'm trying to glue it in place. But once you get a little bit of plastic weld on there and just hold it in place for a second or two, it really kind of goes a lot quicker. So now we're just going to do the regular rest of the length, get the whole thing put into place. I forgot to video one of the steps here, and so... What we're doing here is, uh, this is afterwards, I'm, I'm just gluing in place using some CA from the inside and some zip kicker. Uh, I'm gluing everything in place a little bit more permanent to make it nice and rigid and stiff. As you can see, I have a piece of angle uh, L uh, styrene there. That's there to help support the uh, the angle and to keep the shell from like forcing that angle back outwards. Once I got this cut off, I had to file a groove in that L, brat, L angle in order to get it around the motor. And this is where we're at. Got it fitting on the frame nice and around the motor perfectly good. Pop the cab on there. It's starting to look like a switch engine again. As you can see, that angle worked out really, really well right there. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Turned out really nice on each side. The other side, I got a little bit of a gap, and I'll show you that here in the bottom. Got that little, I'll get my tweezers, and I'll show you the, the gap right here. I've got to fill that in a little bit, but that's not that bad. It's pretty easy to do. Hope you guys are all enjoying watching this project so far. I'm having a blast building it and making these videos. It's a lot of fun. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you hit that little bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep them on the shiny side.